Hey, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to Revive and Reflect. Um, I'm Tim, for those of you who don't know, don't know me. Uh, and um, so when Pastor Thurman had asked me earlier this week to just um, record and share a, a uh, devotion for this morning, uh, I was just immediately started thinking back to what it is that was on my heart, what it is that I wanted to share. Uh, it's crazy, crazy times, a lot going on right now. Um, but there's this message that I, you know, pulled out some of the notes and was going through and uh, God just kept putting that in my mind and on my heart. And so I just wanted to share that with you this morning. I uh, hope that's okay. Um, so as the old saying goes, sticks and stones may break my bones, but yes, if we all know it, words will never hurt me. Uh, we know that that's not true. Uh, in fact, I, I have broken... Uh, several bones in my body, uh, broken my right arm multiple times, my left arm multiple times, broke my foot. Um, none of those ever hurt as bad as some of the words that people have said over me, said to me, uh, that I found out said about me behind my back. Um, you know, and, and understanding the reality that words do hurt. Okay, um, it's it's not something that. Uh, you know, maybe you don't think about it for a while and you're just kind of sitting down and all of a sudden it just hits you and you remember it and you start getting really upset all over again. Uh, and so I just want to talk this morning a little bit about the impact of our words. Okay, um, in uh, James chapter 3, verse 3 through 5, it says this, it says, We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. Okay, um, on our honeymoon, uh, Erica and I uh, went to went to Jamaica and we went horseback riding one day. And I just remember sitting on this big, magnificent beast and just sitting there being like, man, this is so crazy that this little um, bit in the mouth of this horse, it, it, it controls the entire horse itself. Okay, it's it's so crazy that something so small can uh, control and direct something so big, you know? And Or even just this this ship, I was looking at this, uh, you know, I've got this hanging up and uh, near my office and was just thinking about something, again, something so big and so great and so grand being guided and directed by just this small rudder, okay, and and so it can kind of control the ship, you know, and and not not that you know the ship itself, but something so small controlling something so big, um, and, and in that same way, the words that we speak, okay, the, the tongue that we have is a small thing. It makes grand speeches, and it, it controls things in our lives, okay. Um, for example, I just want to give you a couple small points here, but uh, words actually set the course for your life. Okay, when, when you're looking at a situation, when you're looking at the things that you want to do, if you constantly speak negativity or death over it, or uh, it's not going to go as great as if, if something that you spoke positivity over or life over. Um, so speaking life over things that are going on, uh, you know, around you. Uh, in fact. Uh, I'm working on this this project right now at our house, and it is uh, taking a lot longer than I initially anticipated. I expected it to be just something short and quick. It's an easy fix, uh, and I found the more that you take apart from a foundation and realize the foundation uh, is not as great as you initially thought it was, it's going to take a little bit more time to fix some things, right? Um, and so I had initially told Erica, I said, I was like, babe, it's just going to be just a quick fix. We'll get it done. No problem. We're good to go. Uh, and here we are, several days working on it later, several hours on it spent, and it's like, I, I told her last night, I said, I was like, alright, we're gonna get this thing done tomorrow, I'm so excited. And uh, she was like, uh-huh, yep, okay, you know, and, and so we're just kind of laughing about it, because it's, um, the what I'm speaking over it, okay, and, and in my mind, trying to be positive, right? Uh, and so it's uh, setting the course for my day, so to speak. Uh, and in that same way, you can set the course for your life or the things that you want to do by being positive and not negative. Um, but in the same way that, that, that you set the course uh, by speaking positivity, also understand that words can harm as well as help. Okay? Uh, continuing on in that same verse in James, or uh, same chapter in James, it says, No one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the very image of God. 
And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out, of, out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and so you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring, okay? We can praise our creator and curse his creation. Our tongue can bless, encourage, speak life, or it can speak death, curses, no life, uh, over creation and negativity. Uh, in fact, I heard it once said that the evidence of being filled with God's spirit is not speaking in other tongues, but controlling the tongue that you have. In fact, I remember that was always the most confusing thing in church for me, was going to church and seeing people just have this great time and, and, and you know, a good altar call and all this different, uh, you know, speaking in tongues. But as soon as they leave the building, the things that they would say would be cutting someone down or being negative or, or being hurtful, you know. And, and so, I mean, sure, yeah, like when we're filled with spirit, we, you know, the evidence, initial evidence is speaking in tongues. But at the same time, it's also controlling the tongue that we do have. All right. Um, I heard a story one time about a man who went to go visit his dad and he was going to have lunch with his dad. He goes into this building uh, to where, where his dad works. The lady told him, she said, hey, he's not quite ready yet. Um, you know, if you want to wait in his office, feel free. Okay, so he goes up there and, and he's looking through some pictures and just kind of reminiscing on old days with his family and his sister and his parents, you know, and, and he finds this uh, little project, this little creation of something that he had made whenever he was just a boy. and and. He, he said, you know, I remember making it at my grandparents. I remembered on the farm and putting this project together. And he's like, I thought it was the greatest thing anybody could ever give their dad. And he's like, you know, years later, I look at it. And I'm like, man, this is so silly. It looks awful. I don't understand why my dad even has this in his office to this day. Uh, and he said, you know, I, I, I know why, obviously, as, as his son, he said, because how we treat the creation says a lot of a lot about how we feel about the creator uh, and so he said because my father loves me he loves you know the creator of this thing uh, you know that, that all of a sudden it just he it's something that he wants to keep okay and so how we treat one another how we uh, talk to one another how we encourage one another uh, you know that says a lot about how we feel about the Creator which is God all right and so just uh, just a couple more things that I want to I throw out there um, you know, people people think that complaining is something that's going to help. You know, complaining creates a future where the focus is on what you don't like. Instead of focusing on the things that you do like and focusing on the things that are going well, you put a lot of focus on what you don't like. Uh, complainers assume that by complaining, they're actually doing something. Um, when when doing house chores or doing projects at my house, my dad would always tell me, you know, when I'd start to complain, he said, "Listen, son, you can complain all you want." It's not going to do anything, okay? It's not going to fix anything. Um, complainers create a future where the only people who want to be around them is other complainers, okay? So you got a couple people sitting down who just like to complain all day long, back and forth, you know, but understanding that they create a world that not even they want to be in, okay? And so have you ever been around somebody who just complains so much that it just sucks the life right out of you? and, and you know, it's one thing if you vent, you're having a bad day, and you're just venting to someone that you trust. But it's another thing entirely to just constantly be negative uh, and constantly be that source of frustration. Okay, and so if you can change it, change it. If you can't, change your attitude towards it. All right, so we have to make a choice uh, as how we will use our words. We, you know, speak life, speak death. We get to make that choice. Um, and understanding this, that words can bring healing to others. All right, so uh, in James 3.12, he says, does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Okay, um, in, in Proverbs 12 and 18, it says, some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Okay, notice that it's the words, all right? The words of the wise bring healing. All right, right now we're in a day and age where you have to measure your words carefully. You have to be, you know, when you're when you're getting ready to say something, you know, I, I've encouraged my like myself, I've encouraged other people before you, you, you say something to somebody, before you post something, you know, just, just think and pray, is, is this going to be something that's going to be hurtful or is it helpful? Is it something I'm speaking out of my spirit because I'm frustrated or something I'm speaking... Um, you know, because it, it actually will help a situation. Um, so, so just measure measure that and, and um, make a decision 
essentially based off of that. All right, so um, you know, I, I hope I hope these words have encouraged you. I know it's something that was used as an encouragement for me. Um, you know, I'm just gonna quickly pray before we close out. God, right now, I pray that you would just be with each and every person under the sound of my voice. That uh, God, that you would just guide and, and lead us and guide us, and um, you know, direct our words so that we're saying the things uh, that you want us to say, Lord, and and that we'd be uh, you know quick to listen but slow to speak, uh, and really just think through what it is that you have for, uh, for us to say, and, and, and that you would guide us and direct us. In your name, we pray. Amen. CPR family, I love and miss you guys. Hope you're doing well. Uh, God bless.